The period leading to 1431 saw the decline of a once powerful kingdom, the Khmer, an empire that occupied most of modern-day Cambodia. Its problematic water system took a toll on its economy, coupled with the migration of its people out of the kingdom. During this time, another empire was also on the rise, the Ayutthaya of Thailand. This weakening of the Cambodian Empire was seen as an opportune moment for Ayutthaya to take over and in that year, it seized Khmer's capital, Angkor, ending its 600-year reign. As a result of this invasion, the Thai people took with them around 9,000 men from the fallen empire of Khmer back to Ayutthaya, most of whom are laborers and artisans, including musicians. It was a common practice back in the time when the services of these so-called spoils of war were used by the colonizing empires as cheap or free labor. This kind of practice leads to an immediate transfer of culture and tradition from one empire to another, more efficient and effective than when it is transferred through usual vehicles such as trade and migration. These captured Khmer musicians performed whenever their services were required, using their own traditional styles and musical sensibilities, inadvertently introducing and rooting Khmer music into Thai musical culture. The fall of the Khmer Empire was only one of the many factors that allowed Thai classical music to become what it is today. Centuries of trade and the movement of people before and after 1431 affected the transfer of musical instruments and practices around the kingdoms of mainland Southeast Asia, thus their striking similarities. Thai traditional music can be differentiated between court and village. Court music, being the traditional classical that we know today, is often associated with the ruling class and the elite few who use them for entertainment and ceremonies. Music was fully supported by the rich people. Compositions were commissioned for upcoming celebrations, construction and importation of musical instruments were financed, professional court musicians were employed, and as well as the training of student musicians. Thai classical music is predominantly ensemble oriented thanks to its prized musical group, the Pifat. The Pifat ensemble is an important component of Thai classical music which is deeply rooted in the cultural traditions of Thailand. It is part of the gong chime tradition prevalent in Southeast Asia along with Indonesia's gamelan and the Philippine kulintang. A basic pifat ensemble may consist of one ranat ek or a high-pitched boat-shaped xylophone, a kong wong yai or a lower-pitched graduated gong laid in a circular frame, a pi or a quadruple reed oboe with six holes, a pair of small cup-shaped cymbals called the ching, and a double-headed drum called the taphon. It has a very similar setup to Cambodia's Khmer classical ensemble, the pinpiat, although with its instrument taking on different names. Thai classical instrumental music for the most part is heterophonic, a texture characterized by the variation of the same melody played by different instruments simultaneously. In heterophonic performances, each musician in the ensemble plays the same basic melody but embellishes and ornaments it in their own unique way. This creates a kind of musical dialogue where each musician contributes their own individual voice to the overall sound. It is often used in conjunction with other musical techniques such as improvisation, ornamentation, and rhythmic variation which creates a rich and intricate musical texture that is both beautiful and expressive. One of the chief functions of the Pifat Ensemble is to perform sophisticated compositions to accompany traditional Thai dance performances. In fact, the Pifat Ensemble is often considered to be inseparable from Thai classical dance as it provides the rhythmic and melodic foundation for dancers to move to. The music of the Pifat Ensemble is typically lively and upbeat, with intricate rhythms and melodies that complement the movement of the dancers. Another function of the Pifat Ensemble is to provide ceremonial music for important occasions such as weddings, funerals, and religious festivals. In these contexts, the music of the Pifat Ensemble is often more subdued and meditative, with a focus on creating a peaceful and contemplative atmosphere. In addition to its ceremonial and dance functions, 
It also serves as a form of entertainment in its own right and is highly regarded for its intricate rhythms, complex melodies, and improvisational nature. During the colonial period, Thailand remained a neutral intermediary state between the British and French colonies in Southeast Asia. It was in this period when reforms were instituted by King Chulalongkorn that would make engagements with Western powers easier, such as the adoption of Western science and languages in the Thai educational system. These reforms paved the way for the introduction of Western musical styles and stirred interests, although its influence is not so much significant. New musical instruments such as the piano, violin, and brass instruments were introduced and were quickly incorporated into Thai classical music, which had previously relied mainly on traditional idiophone and aerophone instruments. Western musical genres such as the opera became popular, and Thai composers began incorporating Western harmonic and melodic elements into their compositions, creating a fusion of Thai and Western music. Despite the influences, traditional court music still continued during this time with the use of the Pifat and Maorian Psalms. However, in 1932, a military coup d'etat ended the absolute monarchy, thereby discontinuing court patronage for traditional music and musicians. Without this support from the ruling class, Thai traditional music was in threat of decline. Fearing this loss of heritage, some musicians in the 1930s started transcribing repertoires from oral tradition to Western staff notation. It was only in the 1980s when the country's education ministry started supporting the institution of music departments in the educational system. Currently, Thai classical music thrives largely in the academia, where it is preserved through research, documentation, education, training, performance hosting, and collaboration with other institutions. Students nowadays get to hone their skills and preserve a heritage that was almost lost. Overall, the imperial to the colonial periods and all there is in between marked significant changes in Thai classical music as it adapted to new musical influences and incorporated them into its own unique style. Today, it continues to be a vibrant part of the country's cultural heritage showcasing its rich and colorful history. Do you know other interesting info on the history of Thai classical music? Go ahead and share them in the comment section. And if you want to see more content similar to this, subscribe to VidsMuzed.